what up? This is Brian. I'm JD. I'm Kyle, and we are The Sword, and this is Antihero Online. Carolina Rebellion 2018, what are you guys looking forward to the most about your set? You haven't played yet. I'm excited to see how many people come and see us, put their hands in the air, and go buck wild, man. Is it? Yeah, dude. You ever played a show before, a <laughs> festival like this? It's awesome. I've, I've seen them, but yeah, I haven't. Yeah. 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 Making, playing the guitar and making the sound that comes out of the amp and hearing the drums and the bass and singing, that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> and with this festival, there's been a really great mixture of a little bit of every genre of rock and metal. Um, how do you guys think that the crowd is going to show up today for your song? I hope they show up in droves uh, if they like funky rock and roll delivered with purpose. Let's, uh, let's touch on the new album that you guys just released uh, yeah, at the early part of March. Um, where were you guys at musically when you went into the studio to start recording this record? Musically, I would say we were intentionally unprepared, uh, with, with the intent being that we would create a lot on the spot and, and be more spontaneous, I think. That was my personal goal. I can't speak for everyone. But. More or less. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we use the studio space as a creative space, like bands used to do in the old days, uh, you know. Um, yeah, just recorded a good old American rock and roll record. So you guys went into the studio with pretty much nothing on the table. No, well, well, I mean, we had demos, you know, but some yeah. of them were kind of half-written songs yeah. and things like that. Like you know? part A, part B. A lot know, of it was just a big folder, late. you know, that we gave to our producer and let him kind of see, like, what do you think? we should do like more of this less of that whatever, you know so it was it was, it was fun working with we that let guy. the Tucker producer Martin. produce yeah yeah and how important is it to have a producer that's going to give you feedback about the music and kind of some things that you might want to change a little bit to make the album sound a little bit better well you know it, it, it all depends on where you're at you know yeah. um, it's different a lot everyone. of times especially you know if you're first starting maybe you have a very clear vision of what you want to do and what you want it to sound like um, which was the case for us, but you know, when you get six albums deep, or even three albums deep, um, you know, you start to kind of, you know, think that maybe we should, you know, bounce these ideas off of somebody else before we actually put them on tape and release them, you know, and uh, have to have a professional, uh, you know, look over this and make sure it's up to snuff, you know, sort of thing. So yeah, I think yeah. it's an experiment too, yeah. you know, just kind of take what you learn from everything before and apply it to the next time you do it. And with your band, how important is it to kind of keep that experimentation and the open and willingness to kind of go beyond and change some things up? Yeah, the, the further we've gone along, I think it's very important uh, it, just to, to keep it fresh for us. I mean, we, we don't make music that we don't like, you know, so it's not like we're the kind of band that's just going to churn out some product just so we can do another tour or something. You know, we, we've been doing this a really long time because we want to. And uh, yeah, we've grown a lot because of it. And with you guys, what is the next step from here? Where do you guys, where do you guys want to go? That's an achievable goal in the next. We'll say oh, that's an year. achievable goal. Oh, okay. Well, I was gonna say space, but um, <laughs> achievable. Final goal. frontier. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to. Uh, it's every time we put out an album, you never know what's gonna happen, and you end up doing some crazy things that you never thought you would get to do. Like you end up playing Radio City Music Hall, or going to open for Metallica for a year or something you know it's just there are things that have happened to us that you would have never been able to predict so it's just kind of I, I just like hanging back and just letting things kind of happen you know you never know what you're gonna do I'd like to play I don't know do they do shows at Mount Rushmore is that a thing I don't know something yeah, weird we, maybe we can make it happen yeah yeah you know setting too many goals for yourself in the music industry these days you better kind of aim low you know you gotta, <laughs> yeah. but it's like life man you just gotta let it happen yeah just roll with the punches yep. pretty much. Stay yeah. soft. Aim low, be high. And you brought up the whole uh, opening for Metallica. Was that a huge career-defining moment for you guys? Yeah. I mean, at the time, it's just uh, uh, an interesting chapter at this point. I mean, that was 10 years ago at this point. We love you guys. Thank you for that tour. But, you know, it's uh, it's certainly not like a thing that turned us into superstars overnight or something like that. We still, we worked really hard getting to that point and we worked really, really hard after that. So it's just, you just gotta, you gotta put the foot to the gas if you wanna play rock and roll for a living. Yeah, sure. And how do you guys keep the music fresh? 
that, that's one of the most important things, especially in the industry now, mm-hmm. when everything's starting to sound the same. We don't that's, listen to any of that. Yeah. Stay out of that shit. Don't listen to <laughs> bullshit. Listen to good music. And it's not that hard. You either you, Look, man, you either got it or you don't. You got the ear or you don't. You know yeah. what's good or you don't. You know, you know what's up or you don't. So, well, fortunately, we do. And we always have and always will. So. And even though that you guys just released your uh, latest album, is there any things that you guys are throwing around, some demos that you might have started working on, some stuff that was left over from the last record that you might want to try and revamp for a new one? I'm, I'm sure there's some leftover yeah. stuff. I haven't gone through the folder again. No, but, uh, it's, it's no, there. No time. There will be a time to do that. We, I like to... You know, we'll, we'll go into the studio and make an album and like kind of purge that whole part of our creative flow, and then we, then we hit the road for a couple of years and get all inspired again, fill the tank back up. You yeah. know, so it's, that's that's kind of the point uh, where I think we're at right now is uh, kind of replenishing the, the creative juices. Oh yeah, totally. And a lot of the bands that I've been talking to this weekend say that that whole staying on the road thing and touring relentlessly is a huge factor in the success of their bands. How have you guys noticed that, you know, going on tour and staying on the road and interacting with the fans and being available for them to see live, how have you seen that affect the success of the band? Any band that that tours a lot, I mean, it just gives you this edge that people that that don't hit the road like that, they don't have. I mean, it just, it makes you fucking grumpy as hell, you know, just angry and pretty much everything and it, and it turns that show into like you know really you, you learn that even though you go through a lot of just dumb shit to get to the point of playing the show it's still what we want to do you know and it's still like um, better than any than doing anything else it's awesome that's everything that I got for you guys is there anything that I didn't touch on that you would like to add hydrate 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 hydrate, hydrate. absolutely don't fuck around Ha, ha, ha.